I'm going to be talking about some of the most important entrepreneurial lessons I have learned in the last couple of months since I started my dropshipping store that is now generating me over $15,000 per month. And I thought this video is quite important to make because a lot of these are like myths and kind of like things that you hear entrepreneurs go through. And some of these are very valuable lessons that I've learned and I think it would be very valuable for you to learn what I did to fix these mistakes and problems and lessons that I've had so that you can avoid yourselves a lot of pain, a lot of disappointment, a lot of time and money when you start your own business, whether that's in dropshipping or whether that's something else. I want to make sure that with this video, you are kind of getting a head start before you even start running a business. That way you can have just a healthier relationship with your family and your business, healthier relationships with your friends. Just in general, avoid a lot of depressions and anxieties and a lot of the stress that comes along with running a business. You'll also be better able to support your loved ones and feel like they are supporting you if you take some of these things that I talk about throughout this video and apply them properly to your own life and are aware that these things might be coming your way if you do start a business. So with that said, sit back, enjoy, relax, and have fun watching. Hey guys, Radha here and welcome back to my channel. So the first thing that I learned was, and by the way, keep in mind, these are all things that actually I have read somewhere. I knew that entrepreneurs face these kind of struggles and issues and my mentors have been talking about this quite a bit. It's always kind of surprising and interesting when it actually happens to you. So the first thing that I noticed right away was that I was no longer on the same level as majority of my friends and a lot of siblings and family members. Not that I'm actually in contact with siblings and family members, really. If you know my story, you know why. You can check that out. I'll probably link it up somewhere up here or in the description. But basically, I have three close friends and with two of them, I was no longer able to be on the same level. And this is what I mean by that. Out of my three friends, one of them is very ambitious and very driven like me. She does computer science. She has her own degree, her own job. She knows where she's going. And then I have two other friends who are kind of confused and lost, which is okay, which is not the problem but a lot of times our conversations often just used to be about gossip small talk some problems that somebody's facing and stuff like that and I love helping people I love talking to them but once I started running a business I would be excited to talk more important stuff I wanted to talk economics I wanted to talk politics I wanted to talk business which I wasn't able to do with these two whereas with the other friend the computer science one I was just able to talk with her on a much higher level because we both were on that same type of level whereas the other two friends not necessarily before I started my business I was kind of able to jump back and forth between these levels also because I was in university back then I was able to get those intellectual conversations that I was in need of through my university program since the illness hit I've no longer been able to have those intellectual conversations in school I also graduated so those were gone and now whenever I wanted to talk business I really didn't have anybody and so when those two friends of mine like wanted to talk to me I would oftentimes be frustrated and upset because it wouldn't be giving me any sort of value it wouldn't be giving me what I was looking for and what I was in need of in terms of a conversation there was nothing beneficial to me and so I didn't enjoy those conversations anymore as much as I used to before just because now that I was moved on from being here to here I wanted something that felt like I was on this level already if that makes sense so suddenly I wanted to go out to all those networking events I never had interest in before even though my professors were like go to networking events now I wanted to have have those mentors that I always telling myself I should kind of look for and now I was like yes I need a mentor I'm, I was craving that just because I was actually doing the things that I love doing which was running a business and you will face that same issue too that you will suddenly fall out of interest with your friends with a lot of family members with people around you in general and you will suddenly feel like you have to find a new circle of friends and uh, new people to interact with just so you can get that need for uh, intellectual interactions filled and that's why a lot of business mentors and a lot of books talk about getting rid of friends that are no longer like that only want to party and that only want to just like go to clubs and stuff because they will not be on the same level as you when you decide to move on to the next level by starting your own business. A second thing that I noticed and this I noticed early but I didn't actually catch on to it until a little later was again something a lot of entrepreneurs talk about but how your own mood will depend on how your business is performing. On 
days where I had sales, I was feeling the happiest. I would feel amazing. I would feel incredible. On days I didn't have sales, I would feel super depressed, melancholic. I would be wondering about life. I would get philosophical and all that lovely stuff. And a lot of times I didn't even notice why my mood was consistently up and down because I wasn't necessarily thinking about the sales either. Yes, it would pop in my mind and I'd be worried because I'd be like, I just spent 50 or 200 bucks on Facebook ads today and there's not a single sale. What the hell, right? But I wouldn't necessarily think that my mood was actually connected to the way my business was performing. And I do remember my professors actually, I took entrepreneurship and strategy in university. So just putting it out there. And my professors would always talk about how once you run a business, your business becomes like your baby. You really care about it. You care about if it's doing well or not. And thus your own mood will be affected and will be based on how your business is performing. I ask myself, well, does that mean I can change that? Is that ever really going to change? And I guess the answer is yes and no. You're always going to care about your business. There's no way you're not going to feel so much when you decide to run a business and it's not doing so well and you will feel amazing on days where it is doing. So that's always going to be there. But you can learn to control it a little bit in the sense that it won't affect you for the rest of your day or for the rest of the week and stuff like that. What I did for myself is really set myself aside a time to work and that's it. Between those hours, like for example, I work two to three hours every day on my administrative work for my business, which includes going through angry customer emails and stuff like that. And after that, I don't work until then next day that way every time when i received another upsetting customer email throughout the day i would not be worried about it because that's also how i would ruin myself my mood because i really cared about helping my customers and if i had a great day and then suddenly in the evening i receive a email from a customer who is somewhat upset i would just feel super down because i'd be like oh i want to help this customer so badly so i decided i'm only going to give myself a certain amount of time per day and wish i'm going to work and leave the rest of the stress for this day for the following day if I'm already finished with work for today. Third thing that was, again, early on in my business in my dropshipping entrepreneurship journey was you really, really, really should run a business in, in an industry with a product you are passionate about because sometimes you won't have sales. Sometimes you will have sales. If you are passionate about the product and the industry you are in, it's gonna be less demotivating to you, especially when you are just starting out. I started out by selling UV sanitizing lights. I believed, oh, I should follow the trends I should sell what people are looking for right now what's in demand and I was super demotivated by this business just because one it wasn't doing incredibly well it was just barely breaking even and I really didn't care about the product that much it was just not exciting to me and so I really didn't work out because of that but once I moved into my second business I was much more passionate about it because I could actually tell this was a product that was touching people's emotions so when you are looking at products when you are looking to start your own dropshipping store don't just go with what's trending right now because somebody is selling a back straightener don't just go and sell a back straightener because if the back straightener is suddenly not selling guess what you're not gonna have the motivation to keep pushing with this store and keep pushing the product because you really did not care about the product to begin with but let's say you have a dog and you love dogs go and find a winning product within the dog niche and I guarantee you that even if the product is not selling just by the fact that you love the niche and you love dog products in general you're gonna keep pushing much harder and be much more motivated it is a true thing that all entrepreneurs say you need to be passionate about the business that you are running don't just do it for the money that never works out don't just do it for the trend don't just do it for the opportunity find something you love doing with the dropshipping business that you want to run number four and i always talk about this super important be customer centric that is what wins the game jeff bezos also says that's what helped amazon win it's super true customers are super important and make sure that you do your best to help your customers as much as you can i reply my customers within a couple of hours if i can at least within 24 hours but make sure you really 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 focus on giving your customers a lot of help if there's an issue with the order refund it without asking questions if they ask for said refund reship the product without them even having to ask for it in the first place and go above and beyond to help your customers it's really going to help you in the long term during christmas time i actually send my customers a handwritten
handwritten. So I wrote my best customers, like I think 20, 50 customers. Handwritten card, signed it with 10 different signatures as if it was my staff. And threw in a $5 Starbucks gift card for each and sent those out. My customers were just so happy because no business really does something like this, right? And that's what I mean by go above and beyond. That little gesture alone. Yes, I spent about 100 bucks on 130 bucks on doing all of this, sending them out and getting those gift cards. But that little gesture alone not just made me super happy and made me feel incredible about running my own business. I actually got a few more sales because of that that covered the entire $130 cost just because customers either repurchased something or recommended my store to somebody else. Highly recommend go above and beyond for your customers. It's true when they say customers are the lifeline of a business, I guess. And that's the fourth thing I learned about running a business. The fifth thing I learned is time management super important everybody talks about that but people don't really know what time management means how to consider what to consider time management for me i realized that meant setting aside two to three hours every day for administrative and operational work meaning two to three hours to fulfill orders two to three hours to message my suppliers if i need to two to three hours to talk to my customers do customer service and analyze facebook ads within those two to three hours analyze my profits and my margins and everything else and then i would set aside another two to three hours for growth basically meaning looking at new products, trying and testing out new products, running new ads, uh, contacting influencers if I needed to, contacting other social media platforms and trying to find different ma marketing strategies for my business. The important thing is that with this one you learn to work smart but also work hard. People always only talk about the working hard part, but never mention that you also need to be working smart, I guess because they don't know about this. Basically working smart means outsource the tasks that you are not necessarily entirely passionate about and maybe, maybe not even good. I personally just say, even if you're good at the task, if you can just outsource it as fast as you can, if money allows, obviously that is because outsourcing does oftentimes cost money. I think it was Bill Gates who once said if I had an incredibly hard job to do I would get a lazy person to do the job because a lazy person will find a smart way to do said job and that's kind of the same concept here if I know there's something that I'm not enjoying about running my business well guess what that thing is going to be demotivating to me ultimately when you start a business yes you'll have to do a lot of things that are demotivating and that you just don't enjoy doing and you will have to do them because in the beginning it's just you it's a one-person show but once you have the financial resources to be able to do so I recommend recommend you outsource those tasks to other people so that you can really focus on what you are passionate about because that way you can save yourself a lot of time because you'll be working on things you enjoy doing and by doing so you'll just have much more drive and you'll work much more efficiently and much quicker and thus earn more money. And then here's a little bonus tip. Bonus tip number six is a lot of people want to run a business to escape the nine to five. And there is some truth to that. The great thing about it, running a business for me was that I really didn't have set hours. I could wake up at 10 today. I could wake up at 11 today. I could wake up at 4 a.m. today and start running my business whenever I want to. I could work whenever I want to. I could leave the country whenever I want to. I just need to take my laptop with me or whatever have you, right? But the issue with running a business that a lot of people never understand and compared to nine to five is that you can never truly tune out of your business and this became evident to me when um sometime during the pandemic when we were not entirely sure how bad it is and how where it's going me and one of my friends were considering going on a small vacation she works as a computer software engineer and she works nine to five i started my business she was like oh i gotta take work off and i was like well i don't so figure out when you can take off and we can leave that is one of the best things about i guess running a business and people think this is like the epitome of freedom that you get to take off whenever you want to. The fact that when I have a stomach ache today, I don't need to work. I can just work double the amount of time tomorrow. Whereas with a job, you necessarily can't do that. The issue, however, is that me and my friend went on vacation right now. Once we're on vacation, she can entirely tune out. She can forget about work. She can truly relax and just have two weeks off, never think about work, do whatever the hell she wants. Me, on the other hand, yes, I can take off whenever I want to. But my business is always going to be in my head. I'm always going to be stressed out. I'm still going to have to work every day a little bit here and there. Because while I can work from anywhere in the world, there's always going to be some sort of task I'll have to do daily. Especially if I don't have like a virtual assistant or anybody else to outsource the work to. Let's assume I did have them, however. There'll still be stress on my mind because I'll have to make sure the VA is doing their work properly. So I'll have to double check on them. I'll have to make sure that I double check on the profit that's coming in every day. I'll have to double check all of the other 
other things that are going on like the Facebook ads did Facebook just shut down my ads while I'm on vacation well great now I need to figure that issue out so while you do get the chance with a business to work from anywhere in the world to work whenever you really want to you're never truly out of stress you're always in the business in a working mindset yes you can take off whenever you want those two weeks of vacation but you will never truly truly be off work is what I'm trying to say. That's why running a business is ideal for people who really love working and who are passionate about what they're doing and who are what I would call workaholics. I personally am like that. I generally don't enjoy a lot of things in life unless they're working towards my goals. I don't enjoy watching, like I do enjoy watching movies and stuff, but they don't do much for me. I feel much more satisfied when I work on my business, when I work toward on my music, when I work on my art, when I work on something. That's why I'm saying... Running a business is truly for workaholics. Yes, you can work whenever you want to, but you will always be under work mode wherever you are, whatever time it is, really. Ultimately, that did teach me, however, uh, better time management skills and better stress and mood management skills because I realized that and I was like, okay, I need to set myself a certain amount of work hours per day so that I'm not consistently under stress 24-7. I understand that there will be some stress throughout the day that lingers on because my business is always on my mind, but at least it's not the same amount of stress I'm having while I'm working those two to three hours throughout the day. And those were the biggest lessons so far I have learned from running a business. I hope you found this video interesting. I hope you found some value in it. If you did, please smash that like button because it helps me with the YouTube algorithm. And if it helps me, I'm going to produce more content for you guys. Subscribe if you haven't already because I post two to three new videos every week and they're on awesome topics, some fun stuff here and there. Please subscribe. I would appreciate that. And let me know in the comments below if you have any questions. I'll be very happy to answer them. Answer as many as I can all the time. And yeah, that's it. Thanks again. Cheers.